Okay, so here we go. Transformation of exponential function. So it's transformation. They work the same as they always have. Uh, label the graphs y equals c to x below. So is c greater than 1 or between 0 and 1? Greater than 1. So by process of elimination, then what? C is between 0 and 1. Um, but regardless of that, what's the y-intercept for both of these? 1. What's the x-intercept? None. There is no x-intercept. What's the horizontal asymptote? y equals 0, right? By which we know it's the equation of the horizontal asymptote. What's the domain? And what's the range? Greater than 0, right? Okay, can't be equal to zero. You cannot get to that asymptote. You cannot raise something to a power that such that it'll ever be equal to zero. You get as small as you want, right? Like two to the negative one billion would be one over two to the billion, which is pretty small, but non-zero, all the same. Below our list of transformations that we will apply to basic functions. Okay, so just a horizontal translation: x is replaced by x minus h. Reflection on the y-axis, x is replaced by negative x. Horizontal stretch, x is replaced by dx. A vertical translation, y minus k is equal to c to the x, or y is equal to c to the x plus k. Reflection on the y-axis, negative y is c to the x, or y is equal to negative c to the x. And a vertical stretch, y over a is c to the x, or more commonly, right, these are the more common. And so those are the transformations that we're going to apply to basic exponential functions, right? I think the most basic of which would be like 2 to the x and 1 half to the x, at least, kind of, you know, if you're thinking of a basic function. <coughs> would any of these transformations affect the domain? Okay, so if you're stretching vertically or moving it up or down, or left or right, or no, I mean, the domain is real numbers, right? So you can't affect that. So the answer is no, since the domain is all real numbers. Well, that's not that emphatic a no. So no, since the domain is all real numbers. So there's nothing we could do that would cause something to become an undefined value, right, by part of the domain. Um, would any of these transformations affect the range? Yes. What affects the range? Okay. So vertical translation will affect the range. Anything else? <coughs> will stretching it affect the range? No, right? It's still going to go all the way up. Oh, what else? A reflection. Reflection on the x-axis. So reflection on the x-axis. In which case, it would become y is less than or less than 0. Right? Would any of these transformations affect the equation of the horizontal asymptote? If so, which one or ones? So what's going to affect the horizontal asymptote? Reflection, no, I mean it'll still be zero. If I move it, vertical translation will, right? If I move that, if I move the whole thing up three units, your new horizontal asymptote will be y equals three. Okay. So, yeah, vertical translation, so yes. Uh, vertical, only a vertical translation, right? Vertical translation only. Or only a vertical translation. Will any of these transformations affect the y-intercept? If so, which ones? So, first of all, will they be, will it be affected? Yeah, what will affect it? Vertical stretch. Okay, what else could affect it? 
vertical translation. What else? Reflection. What kind of reflection? Reflection on x axis. Okay, anything else? If I move it left, won't that affect it? Or right? So horizontal translation is also going to affect it, right? Horizontal translation. Which we're back to calling a horizontal translation, and not a phase shift. Okay, so lots of things, right? Any translation, vertical stretch, reflection on the x-axis. How can you find the y-intercept? What do you put into the equation? X equals zero, right? So y-intercept occurs when x is zero. What transformation must be performed on y equals c to the x in order for the transform function to have an x-intercept? Vertical translation. So you have to do a vertical translation, right? Um, either vertical translation down, or you could do reflection in the x-axis and then move it up. But either way, it's going to require a vertical translation of some form. OK, good with this page. Um, for the function, so here's the, the function in, in its transformed form. y equals a, bracket c, bracket b, bracket x minus h, bracket plus k. What's the domain for this function? x is an element of the reals. If a is greater than 0, the range is y is greater than 0. And if a is less than 0, then y is less than 0. Okay, because it's been a reflection. And the equation of the horizontal asymptote is? K. K. Y equals K. Right. I mean, it's Y equals zero. What's the only thing that affects the horizontal asymptote? A vertical translation. Move it up three, the asymptote moves up three. Move it down three, the asymptote moves down. Okay, so state the equation, speaking of asymptotes and range. State the equation of the asymptote and the range for each of the following functions. So, what's the horizontal asymptote? Y is equal to... So, what's happening to this thing? What affects the asymptote? It's the only thing that affects the asymptote. Negative 3. Y equals negative 3, right? The vertical stretch doesn't affect the asymptote. Right? Because it's taking place about the asymptote line. Horizontal stretch, if there is one, which there isn't, doesn't affect the asymptote because it's just going this way. Reflection, this doesn't affect the asymptote. Again, that's just happening that way. <coughs> What's the range? Negative 3 is not an acceptable range. It is part of the range, but what's the range? Why is great? Y is greater than <laughs> negative 3. It can't be greater than 0 if it's oh. negative 3. Y is greater than negative 3. The only, I mean, it's going to, the range is the asymptote, right? But it, the only question now is, does it lie above the asymptote or below? What tells us that? The sine of A. Speaking of which, so for the next one, what's the horizontal asymptote? Seven. Y, not 7. Y equals 7. What's the range? Y is less than 7. Why is y less than 7? It's a reflection in the x-axis, which means that it's now going down. This one, what's the horizontal asymptote? Y equals 0. What's the range? Y is less than 0. It's a reflected range. So there's no k value. Right? So k is 0. So y equals 0 is the asymptote. But there is a reflection in the x-axis, so it is going down, not up. The graph <coughs> of y equals 6, 1 third negative to, sorry, 1 third to the negative 2x. Is the graph of y equals 1 third x 
vertically stretched by a factor of six. Right. So when it's over here, it's doing what it says. If it's over here, it'd be one sixth y, and then we would say about the x-axis, horizontally stretched by a factor of three. 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 Two. Three. 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 Again, x was replaced by negative x. Remember, we do stretches first. Order of uh, order of transformations is important, right? Stretches first, then reflections, then translation. Equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. <clears throat> the y-intercept of the graph is. Y equals six, yeah. Well, just six, really. We just say six. How do you get that? You just go here. Y is equal to six. One third to the negative two times zero, which is six times one third to the zero, which is six times one, which is six, right? So y intercept just set x to zero, and there's really not much going on around here. It's a vertical stretch by a factor of six. Um, if there are no translations, then the equation of the exponential function is, 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 is of the form y equals a times c to the power of bx. Then the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, right? No translations. Only thing that can affect the horizontal asymptote. And the y-intercept is a. Right? This becomes 1, right? x is 0, bx is 0, c to the 0 is 1. As long as c isn't 0 and it's not, it's an exponential function. State the y-intercepts. Read state. State, right? It means you don't even have to work it. You just say it. Okay, so do these three. What are they? State the y-intercepts. And all we are really doing is just writing a number down, right? Just write a number down. So what's the y-intercept? If you want, you can work it out. So you state them, I'll, I'll determine them, so I'll do the work that shows that, right? And then you just see if you're... What's this one? Save me the word. <laughs> Negative five, right? Same reason. This becomes zero, right? There's no, there's no translation, right? If there were a translation on top of this, I'd say, well, you're starting here, and then you're going to go up or down, right? If there were a translation. That would happen at the end. The graph of y equals two to the x. A nice starting equation, right? It's vertically stretched by a factor of 3, horizontally stretched by a factor of 1 half, reflected in the x-axis, translated 1 unit left and 5 units up. Yeah. Write the equation of the transform function in the form y equals a, c, b, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, what are we going to do first? Do the vertical stretch. How do I do a vertical stretch? So let's write this. y equals 2 to the x. We're going to do a vs by 3. So what does it become to do? How do you get a vertical stretch by 3? Replace y by 1 third y or y over 3. Okay. So this is going to be y over 3 is equal to 2 to the x. And we'll clean that up and say what? So y equals 3 times 2 to the x, right? Because we need the a on the other side. Okay, that's my Vs by 3. What's next? Okay, so H, oh, I should write that under the arrow. So here's the arrow, we're doing Hs by 1 half. What do I do to get a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 half? So I replace x with 2x. Right? 
So it's all going back to test number one. Uh, what's next? Uh, reflected in the x-axis. How do you reflect in the x-axis? Negative three. Okay. So, so reflect in. So we're going to go negative y is equal to three, and then we'll just move down here and rewrite that as y equals negative three. Well, I'm writing, I'm, I'm going by the book, right? Y was replaced with negative Y, and then I'm cleaning it up because we want Y by itself on the left-hand side. Okay, and left, we, we could do these two together, right? So uh, what do we got here? Translate one unit left, so H, T, left, one, and a V, T, up, five. Okay. So, what's that going to become? How do we do the up 5? y minus 5 is equal to negative 3 bracket 2, 2, and what do we do with the x? x plus 1. So ultimately, negative 3, 2, to the 2 bracket x plus 1, plus 5. Yeah. Okay? Now, looking at this, I can read this, right? I can look at this and say, oh, you went left 1. Oh, you went up 5. Oh, three, five. oh there's a stretch. You know, now, if I had to read it in order, I'd go back and start with this, and then do this, and then do this, and there isn't one there. But you may see it written as 2x plus 2, right? And then you're going to say, oh, okay, i got to factor out the 2, right? I have to write it in this form in order to read the vertical, or sorry, the horizontal translation, right? Okay, state the following features. What's the equation of the asymptote? Y plus 5? <laughs> What's the domain? X belongs to the reals. Okay, we can't really change the domain, right? What's the range? Y, okay, so it's 5, but this is reflected, so Y is less than 5. Determine the Y-intercept. So how do we determine it? What do we do? So we've got negative 3, 2 to the 2 bracket, what? 0 plus 1 plus 5. So it's negative 3 times 2 squared. Okay. So the y-intercept is negative 7. Negative 7. Verify the information above with your GDC. Okay, I think I plotted it. Plotted it. Uh, that's this one here. Okay, oh, look, 0, negative 7, there's 5, your asymptote. Okay, so had you graphed it on your GDC, you would see something similar. This is just a, a little bit nicer, but remember, the calculator is what you're going to have on a quiz and on the exam. You don't have this, but this visualizes nicer, I think. Check. So I saw the asymptote, I saw the domain, the range, and uh, the mapping. Oh, back to a mapping. XY becomes negative 2X plus 1, 1 quarter Y minus 3. Shows the transformations that were applied to Y equals 2 to the X. Describe the transformation in the correct order. Okay. What comes first? Stretches. Stretches. Okay. So give me a stretch. Uh, one half of y. No. Mappings do what they do. It says it does. So what kind of stretch and how much? Vertical vertex by 
Vertical stretch by a factor of? One fourth. Okay? Vertical stretch is going to take place on the y value, right? Okay, so number one, Vs by a factor of one quarter. Okay, and we know which axis it's about. Um, are there... No, sorry. Don't. Good job on last post, though. That's a tough piece. Uh, vertical stretch by a factor of one quarter. Okay, are, is there a horizontal stretch? Yes. By a factor of? Two. two. Right? Mapping really does. Because it's doubling the x value, right? It's like x, two x. Oh, so I'm doubling it. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Wow. What was the, the wall shook. By a factor of two. Are there any reflections? Okay, where, what, who? Y. Reflection in the... Yeah, so the axis become negative, right? So it's reflection in the y-axis. <laughs> any other reflections? No, cover structures, cover reflections, so what's left? Translation. So we're going right one, down three. So uh, H, T, right one, B, T, down three. I'd call that five. They're really both four, right? I mean, it doesn't really, you know, you can do it in either order. The point 38 lies on the graph y equals 2 to the x. Determine the coordinates of its image point on the transformed function. Okay, so what do we want to do? So we just run through the transformations, right? Just take the point. I kind of like doing it that way. So I start with 38. We stretch by a factor of a quarter, so it becomes what point? So now the point is 3, 2. So let's just put a little 1 under there, right? So this 1 indicates that one, 3, 2. Okay, then we're going to do 2. So HS by a factor of 2, so what do we got? 6, 2. Okay, 3, reflection in the y axis? Negative 6, 2. Uh, four and five. We could do these together. Let's do four and five. Okay, right one and down three. Negative one. I mean, in theory, you should probably just be able to put the three in here and get negative six plus one is negative five, and put the eight in here and get two minus three is negative one, right? Because the mapping's going to take you to the to the image point, okay? It's also nice that if you did do that, that it matches up with doing it this way, right? Like we have the words, we tried the words out, we did each one individually, and we say that, hey, yeah, if you put a three in there, you're gonna get negative five, and if you put a eight in there, you're gonna get negative one. So it works, it's a good check. Write the equation of the transform function in the form y equals a c b to the x minus h plus k. Okay, so basically just kind of what want to work our way through the same deal, right? Just going through one at a time. <coughs> so <coughs> scooch this back down. Uh, vertical stretch by a factor of a quarter. So what do you do? It's going to be 4y is equal to 2 to the x. Okay, which we could then write as y is equal to 1 quarter two to the x. You could do either, right? So you can write it as 4y equals 2 to the x and then y equals 1 quarter times 2 to the x or you can just write it as y equals 1 quarter times 2 to the x. Horizontal stretch by a factor of 2, what do we get? So let's just call this, uh, let's start here. Start with y equals 2 to the x and then this is number 1, which carries through. <coughs> So one quarter times two to the what? HS by factor of two? One half x, right? 
Uh, number three, reflection in the y-axis. What do we do? Replace the x with a negative x, so it's going to become negative one-half x. Okay. Uh, four and five. Okay, so if we do four and five next. So which way are we going? Uh, which way are we going? Uh, right one, down three. So down three would be y plus three is one quarter times two to the negative one half x. And what are we doing? Are we going left one? Right one. Oh yeah, right one is minus one. Minus one. Okay, leaving us ultimately with y is equal to one quarter two negative one half x. Sorry, that was minus, minus one and then minus three. Okay. Verify the equation using the image point from part B, so the point 3, 8. So what are we going to do? Sub in a 3 for x and see if we get an 8 for y? Okay. Oh no, we have to use the image, we have to use the negative 5, negative 1, right? So this is the image point. So if we put in a negative 5 for x, <clears throat> so what are we doing here? Um, y is equal to 1 quarter, 2, negative 1 half, what do you say, negative 5, minus 1, minus 3. So 1 quarter, 2, so that's negative 6 times negative 1 half will be 3. So 1 quarter of 8 is 2 minus 3, y equals negative 1. Okay, so we verified it, right? That image point, when x is negative 5, y is negative 1 on this. Verify information on the GDC or here. There we go. So 1 quarter 2 to the negative 1 half x minus 1 minus 3. And what were the characteristics we're looking for? Well, we should have the point negative 5, negative 1. And minus 3, that's going to be your asymptote, right? Your range just goes up, so it's not reflected. So it's going to be y is greater than negative 3. All good stuff, yeah. So, check. What's next? The point 2, 4 lies on the y equals x squared. What is this? That is not an exponential function. No. So we must be trying to make some other point here besides 2. The point 2, 4 lies on the graph y equals x squared. When the graph y equals x squared is transformed by a single transformation into the graph of y equals 4x squared, the transformation can be seen as either a vertical stretch by a factor of 4 above the x-axis <laughs> So the point 2, 4 would become the point 2, 16 on the graph y equals 4x squared. Or we could see it as what? So 4x squared could have been 2x quantity squared. If x is replaced by 2x, then it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of? One half about the y axis. Okay, so remember with x squared, right? One man's vertical stretch is another one's horizontal stretch. So in which case the point two four would become the point one four on the graph y equals four x squared. Put a one in there, you'll get out of four. The point three eight. Okay, back to exponential. But here's the point we're trying to make. The point 3, 8 lies on the graph y equals 2 to the x. When the graph of y equals 2 to the x is transformed by a single transformation into the graph y equals 8 times 2 to the x, it can be seen as either a vertical stretch by a factor of 8 about the x-axis, in which case the point 3, 8 would become the point 
3 and 64 on the graph, right? Because we're going to multiply it by 8, so. Or a horizontal translation. How does it become a horizontal translation? Hint, use your exponent law. So we've got 8 times 2 to the x. What's 8? 2 to the power of 3. What's 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of x? Yeah, let's go x plus 3. So 8 can be written as 2 cubed. And if it is, you've got 2 cubed times 2 to the x, which is 2 to the x plus 3, which is a horizontal translation. How many units to which way? Three units to the left. <coughs> Got to get left, right, one of these. Got to get left, right. In which the point 3, 8 would become the point 0, 8 on the graph. Eight. So you put a 0 in, you get 1, 8, you get 8, right? You get the point 0, 8. Okay. Does it say use your GDC? But well, we can go look at this. So here I graphed this for you. So here's here's a point. It's a oh my god! I have like seventeen. Okay, there's the graph y equals 2 to the x. Here is the graph of y equals 2 to the x, vertically stretched by a factor of 8. Okay, so now it goes through 0, 8, right? Because instead of 0, 1, it's going to be 0, 8. Here is the graph y equals 2 to the x again, but I'm going to translate it three units to the left. So I'm going to take this graph and move it three units this way. Okay, so if you look here, there's three eighths, right? And I'm going to do that by just going um, plus three. So now I get rid of the two to the x graph. Get rid of the two. Ugh. Okay, so what do you see about the green graph and the blue graph? They're the same, right? Here, I'll turn one off. Okay, that's off, that's back on, that's off, that's back on. So they're the same, right? A vertical stretch by a factor of 8 on the graph 2 to the x could also be a horizontal translation 3 units to the left. Why do they give different things? Different image points are just, we're starting with different points to begin with on them. Right? Like in the first one, let's go back. So on the first one, it was uh, blah, blah, where it goes. So 3 8 became 364, in this case, 3 8 becomes 0 8. Okay, so which, which point became, which point here became 364? It was 664 became 364, right? Because we moved it three units to the left. You end up with a point at 364, which point was it? So in this case, it's the point that got vertically stretched. It was 38 became 364, and in this case, it was 664 became 364. And in this case, um, 38 became 08, by moving it to the left three, and in this case, uh, zero one became zero eight, right? Because it got stretched vertically by a factor of eight. So the point that you're translating to get that new point is a different point, but the effect is the same. Yeah. So when would we use like either? So when would you use either? As you can see from the previous. <laughs> It's like one of those two-wheeled self-balancing things. It's a nice segue. As you can see from the previous examples, different transformations corresponding to different image points can produce the same transformed graph. Right? So it was like 664 becomes 364, or 38 becomes 364 based on what transformation you're doing. 
Um, although both answers are correct, we will often use the one that is the most obvious or least complicated. So in other words, probably the virtual stretch by a factor of 8 is easier than by doing the 8 of the 2 cubed. And the okay, function f of x is 1 quarter of the x is transformed into g of x such that g of x is 32 f of 3x plus 4. Write the equation of g of x in terms of x. Okay, so we're starting with g of x, right? So g of x is 32, so g of x is 32 times f. Okay, what's f? f of x says take the input and go one quarter to the power of whatever's in between the brackets, right? So in terms of x, g of x is 32 times 1 quarter to the power of 3x plus 4. Okay, that's in terms of x. Now, write <coughs> g of x in terms of h of x if h of x is 2 to the power of x. Okay, so we got a function g, we want to write it in terms of h of x, if h of x is 2 to the x. So g of x is 32 times 1 quarter to the 3x plus 4. And we want to write that in terms of h of x, where h of x is 2 to the x, right? So 32 is going to become 2 to the fifth. And one quarter is going to become two to the what's one quarter is the power of two? Two to the negative two, right? Okay. So we're going to write everything in terms of powers of two. So g of x is equal to two to the fifth times two to the negative two to the three x plus four. Okay, so we want to just combine all of these, right, just simplify this. So the first step would be to multiply <coughs> the negative 2 times 3x plus 4, right? So g of x is equal to 2 to the fifth times 2 to the negative 6x minus 8. And g of x, now I'm multiplying powers with the same base. We're going to add the exponents, and it's going to become 2 to the negative 6 minus 3. You can and you maybe should. Now, but it says, it says, right, g of x in terms, so h of x is 2 to the x, right? So g of x is equal to h of what? This thing here, negative 6x minus 3. Right? Because if h of x is 2 to the x, then if we put negative 6x minus 3 in here, we put negative 6x minus 3 up here, that's what we want. Right? So h of x says 2 to the power of this, and that's what this is. You can't take the negative 6x and make that correct. No, I wouldn't. No, you've you got to enter it this way, right? Because you want to end up with this. I want 2 to the power. So what you're saying is, all right, I got all these things, but they're powers of 2, and I want to write it as 2 to the power of something. Okay. So we go to the 2 to the fifth, we do all this, blah, blah, blah. We get up to here. Okay, now I've got this 2 to the power of something. H of x is defined as 2 to the power of whatever's in the bracket. So just take that. Okay. Now if I was saying describe this, I would factor out the negative 6. Right? So if I were saying, describe this, describe the transformations that can be applied to h of x such that g of x is produced. So if I said, describe this, then we're going to want to say, OK, I don't want to write that as negative 6x minus 3. Right? I want to write that as, so h of x is 2 to the negative 6x minus 3. So I'm going to factor out the negative 6, right? So remember the form is a 
bracket C bracket to the B bracket X plus H plus K. Okay, so now I've got the B, negative 6, X. Now, what's next? Think back. This is the first quiz. You got bit by this question. Plus 1 half. See, you learned something. Okay, now what you're doing is that you can you look at this a couple of ways, right? Just say I'm dividing by negative 6. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. Negative 3 divided by negative 6 is plus 1 half. Or, I just always say, well, so negative 6 times what is going to give me negative 3, right? Either way, you get it. So you should get, to check this, just make sure you multiply it back out, get negative 6x. Because if you blow this, if, like, if you wrote a minus 2 there or something, you'll get plus 12. And you should say, oops. And you change it to a plus 2. And now I get minus 12. And you say, oops. And eventually you figure out, oh, I should take this divided by 6 and just get the half. Okay? So now we can describe the transformation, right? There's a, by a factor of, so there's a what? So number one, horizontal stretch by a factor of one-sixth, okay, about the y-axis. Number two, there's a, nope, reflection about the y-axis. Might as well add the y about y axis. Like you don't have to say about the y axis for the horizontal stretch because I know you're all good at that. But reflection has to say followed by horizontal translation left one half. Okay, so H T left one half of a unit. Okay, so horizontal translation left a half. Okay. Look, you know, I'd say go back and, I mean, not tonight if you want to be studying Petrig in that, but at some point, just go back and go through this again. It's the whole H of X and G of X, you know, F of X and G of X in terms of F of X and then H of X and, and that. So just go through and just sort of say, okay, you know, I wrap my head around this and I get why this is this and why, how this became this because I had to do all the powers of 2 and get it as 2 to the power of something. Because that's what h of x is, 2 to the power of something, that thing that's in here. So once I've written this 2 to the power of something, then it's easy to translate it into in terms of h of x. And when I've got that, now it needs a, needs a, needs a little modification, right? Like, what did I do? Well, OK, we've got to clean this up. All right, application. A cup of hot coffee is set on a counter and is allowed to cool. The equation, t of t, big T. So temperature as a function of time is 80 times 0 0.75 to the t over 4 plus 15. Represents temperature of the coffee in t degrees Celsius as a function of time, little t in minutes after being set out on the counter. Use your GDC to sketch a graph and answer the following question. Okay, so let's get out our GDCs, which this time I actually will. Because pretty pictures aren't going to tell the whole story. <coughs> okay, let's go to y equals, and we're going to type in the e equation. 80 bracket 0 0.75 to the power of. Yeah, have a good. Uh, little break, get ready for the test. So 4 plus 15. Okay, so 80 bracket 0 0.75 to the x over 4 plus 15. Okay, so make sure it looks like that. If you have an older calculator, you might have to throw some brackets around the x divided by 4. Okay, now we need a window for this, right, if we're going to graph this. So how long are we going to give this thing to cool down? So we might as well start at time zero, not negative 10. And minutes, I don't know, let's give it an hour, see what happens in an hour. Uh, X scale, let's go by fives. Y min, what's the min Y? It's 15, right? I'm going to put zero in there. Why, why won't it cool down to zero or below? Yeah, room temperature. So in this case, the room temperature would be 15 degrees. 
right? Because that's as cool as it's going to get. How hot's it going to be? What's the max? So kind of okay. So what's that? What? So if that's zero, that's zero. That's one. That's eighty plus it's ninety-five. Right. So the max will be ninety-five. That will occur. So let's go to a hundred. So one hundred by tens. Okay. And let's graph it now. So we we have this. Look, it's decaying. Why is it decay? Because this is. What's the rate of decay? Yeah. What's the rate of decay? What's going down by? Twenty-five percent. Every four minutes. So the t over four is a. It, it's a translation, right? Well, it's not a translation. It's a. It's it's every four minutes it's going down by twenty five percent, right? That's why it's t over four. If that was just a t, every minute it would be going down, right? So t over four, right? So it'll be eighty times 0.75 when t is four. It'll be at seventy five percent of what it was. It'll be another seventy five percent of what it was, which means another twenty five percent decrease in eight minutes, right? Because you get two of these. So in this case, t over four is the the, the quartering period, it's, it's or sorry, the three quartering period. It's the period, it's the amount of time it takes to be three quarters of what it was. Okay. Anyway, just fancy stuff. Okay, so we got this. The initial temperature, so 95 degrees. Okay, so T of zero is 80, 0 0.75 to the zero over four plus 15, which is 95. Don't forget the degrees. Right, units, important. What's the temperature of the room? We got that, right? 15. So that's as cool <coughs> as it's going to get, right? As cool as it's So when this goes out and gets really, really large, such that this goes down to zero eventually, it's going to get really small. Still, you're adding 15. Determine the temperature of the coffee rounded to the nearest tenth of a degree if it's been sitting on the counter for 10 minutes. Okay, so determine means show your work. So we're just going to do a T of 10 is 80, 0 0.75. So in effect, that's what we're doing. And um, the easy way to do this would simply be to, the easy way to work this out is just go second count value and stick in a 10. Right? And you get 53.97. Rounded to the nearest degree, what would it be? 54.0. Okay, so T of 10 is 54.0 degrees Celsius. Determine the time rounded to the nearest 10th takes coffee to cool to 20 degrees. Okay, how do we do that? Yeah, put in a Y, right? So X is our time. So if I want 10 minutes, I put an X is 10. What? And the Y is temperature, so I want the temperature to be 20. Graph that. Okay, find the X coordinate of the point of intersection. Okay, did it say determine or state? Determine. Okay, you could also do this algebraic, right? You could say 20 is equal to 80, 0 0.75 to the t over 4 plus 15. Okay, and then you go like 5 is equal to 80, 0 0.75 t over 4, and 1 16th is equal to etc. Right? But, so we're going to do y1 is equal to 80, 0 0.75. And y2 is equal to 20, and we're going to uh, determine the x-coordinate of the point of intersection. Because the problem is, mathematically, we don't have a way to solve for an unknown exponent, right? right. We, we can't solve this. Okay. We don't have any way to solve this type of equation. 
yet foreshadowing. Yet. What? Like, if you want to do that, I'll do break, then would you go the fourth word of one over 16? Can't do that, because you're not solving for... You, you could do a fourth root when you've got a power of... Like, even if you were doing this... Okay, so the intersection... So we got 38.55. Did it say nearest tenth? So 38.6 minutes. Don't forget the units. So if you were trying to solve this, 1 16th is equal to 3 quarters to the x, you can't do, you don't have the same base, right? Like if that was 1 quarter, then I could write this as 1 over 4 squared is 1 over, which is tomorrow, well not tomorrow, nor Thursday, it's like Friday's lesson. Solving, solving this, so if this was a 1 quarter, we could solve this because I can write that as 1 over 4 squared is 1 over 4 to the x, so x has to be 2, okay? But with the three quarters, the only way we, right now, the only way we can do this is to use our calculator, right? Because you're trying to solve for an unknown exponent. We don't have that in our skill set yet. But we will. Oh, we're done.